Man, this gun blows. <laughs> Is it that? Oh, ah, 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 I just got that. Hey, I'm allowed one every once in a while. I don't know, man. The second you start moving in on my puns, the second, well... What, you, you got like a quarter on the market or something? Oh, why, uh, yes, it went over well in courts. They said, well, Mr. Drawman, we see, we see that you have a rather unusual stake in this, but we're willing to grant you... We're willing to grant, grant pass on this on the grounds that you do not visit us in the dead of night again. <laughs> <laughs> and from there, I said, "Yay! Now I get to now I get to have a punny time." Mister Drawman, that was terrible. I no scope. Please get out of here. Oh, Gobi Desert yourself. And they all just kind of Sorry, and... pardon me. I just gotta back up from the mic a little bit so I can appreciate how much you stretched for that one. <laughs> oh, it's not just stretched. I yoga posed for that one. <laughs> Alright, I think we're starting the next episode. In yep. about three, two, one. Dance, Amy, dance. Oh, I've always so. been a. That's something I've always. Uh, yeah. What am I trying to say here? Dragon Nest. Do you know about that MMO at all? It finally, no. it finally fulfilled one of my long-term goals, and that is playing as a whirling, whirling dervish type character in a in a role-playing game. Just somebody who uses dual blades and just never stops attacking. Pretty much, the Kali <laughs> character, I believe they call it. It lets this so you basically get to be the Tasmanian devil in this Yes! Game. I got the best <laughs> alternate weapon! <laughs> What's the alternate Bomb. weapon? Bomb. <laughs> oh, the Bomb. Dumb stuff. Bomb. <laughs> this game lets you. Behold the power of music! No, no behold the power of, of flat music. <laughs> remember, remember that show, Arthur? Yes. Remember the, oh, the one yeah, I know exactly where you're going with this, but please continue. So there was an episode of Arthur where Arthur was getting ready to play. There was, his, his class had a whole musical recital. They all had their own instrument, and they all had, you know, had a little segment of music to play. Arthur was a pianist, so he played his own... I forget what song he played, but he basically played a whole song of piano. But during a lot of rehearsal, he kept accidentally hitting the wrong notes. And because of this... He started having stage fright and anxiety of his of his performance, because last time he also had the same issue. So he practiced his butt off, but sadly still kept having you know fear and dread of this moment to the point where he, like many characters, had a fantasy segment of it. And during the fantasy segment, he plays B flat instead of B sharp, and everyone boos him for it. They throw tomatoes and lettuce at him, and he's running away ashamed. And Binky's like, "Hey, you stink!" <laughs> he's and in the in the result of it, he's a, he's a bum. He's a hobo. His sister, who's had hiccups, <laughs> his sister's had hiccups the entire episode. And in this fantasy, she got famous for it for never having for having unyielding hiccups. And he's like, hey, I could help you get rid of those. He says, like he has the torn gloves and trench coat. Like, are you kidding? These hiccups made me famous. And so she just runs off and said, hey, come see me sometime. But I don't have money. So, so this like guy comes by, and he, he's he's ready to donate to Arthur. He says, "I know you. You're that boy who said who played B flat instead of B sharp." <laughs> and so I'm imagining the entirety of this weapon is just playing flat music because of the disaster it can bring. Whoa, 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 whoa! I keep forgetting that every time that you have to latch onto that, otherwise you don't have enough jump power to get past that hole. Ah, there's a "that's what she said" joke in there somewhere. But oh, yeah, you're... what you're describing is essentially '90s cartoons in general. <laughs> they had the greatest acid trip. Not that flat. and Doug, Arthur and Doug, both had the most amazing imaginations possible. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, like Doug. Like everyone, remember the sound Doug, when, the sound that made when Doug tried to have a have a fantasy sequence. They go. <laughs> As he retreats, as he goes into the deepest recesses of his own mind. 
I like to imagine Skeeter is just being an asshole and just sitting there making that noise while he does that. Yes! Because <laughs> you have to ask yourself, when Dog is having these sequences, is he just standing there? <laughs> <laughs> Is he just kind of... Ah, like... crap. He's going into a mind sequence again. You want to go get some... What was the name of the restaurant from the movie? <laughs> uh, fr movie? Well, technically there was a dog movie, but nobody remembers that. They remember the cartoon. I got it on VHS. That's a story for another day. So, yeah, it's called Honker Burger. It Honker great... Burger. <laughs> it was I forgot name. about that. It was such a good name. <laughs> It's like, they had, and you know, it was a 90s See you later, Doug. Hank, Hank. That's, hank, hank. that's probably where it came from. Like, yeah, like someone's like, what do we call our new burger selling establishment? Hmm. Okay, uh, I, I feel that, if as long as we're talking about Skeeter, I feel the need to ask about that. Did you ever make the connection when you were a kid? Did you sort of realize he was supposed to be the stand-in for the black character? Or did it never click? You know... It, it never clicked until someone had, like, someone said, you know, he's black, but really? He's, but, really? Because, you know, it's early 2000s when I learned this, and, I'm and you know, my definition of, of black cartoon character is either something for Proud Family or someone wearing <laughs> those outlandishly large, low-hanging pants and, and, <laughs> and golden West Philadelphia, born and raised. On the playgrounds where you spend most of your days. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, I, di I didn't know. Like, I knew he was green. Well, blue. He was blue. But I didn't think he no, was No, no, green black. was the bully. Yeah, Roger. Roger. Roger, that's his name. I was struggling for it. Wait a minute. Did you... S this... Yeah. Oh, that spring isn't actually meant to take me anywhere. I forgot about that. You'll find that a lot of things don't go anywhere in this game. <laughs> That's a fair point, actually. <laughs> it's not even me being an asshole. It's a proper understanding of that game's layout. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I bring up Doug, though, I remember reading once the Encyclopedia Dramatica article for <laughs> that game, which was great, by the way. But uh, mm -hmm. they specifically said no one ever laughed at any point in this show. And at the risk of invoking the rage of some random member of Anonymous out there, I beg to disagree. There was one moment in the show, and I wish I had a webcam to show this off. But uh, it's the episode where Doug uh, finds the lost wallet and he decides to figure out who the owner is and return it to them. Yeah. And then everyone thinks he's a weirdo because he doesn't just keep the money to himself. He turns to Skeeter and he asks him, Skeeter, do you think I'm a weirdo? And he says, of course. And he just shoves two straws in his nose and goes, what's so wrong with being a weirdo? <laughs> I remember this. I think that's where my absurdest sense of humor came from. Just the things that come completely out of nowhere. You're not even expecting them. They push things just enough to be like, <laughs> to completely take you off guard. It's like a disconnect from reality for a second. I love moments like that in any type of, be it a video game, be it a movie, be it a cartoon. And I think it all started with that one moment. For me, my humor in relation to Doug came about when they were, it was the talent show episode. And Doug, you know, he had a dummy. Oh yeah, the dummy. Yeah, and so, you know, Doug... I almost lost my head there for a second. Hank, Hank. <laughs> <laughs> and poor Chop, you know, he's, he's toweling Doug off because he's so nervous. He's sweating a lot. And so the towel is wet. So what does he do? He rings it out on a plant. And the plant dies. And it makes the best... <laughs> it makes the best sound effect ever. <laughs> From there I, on... I do not remember this, but it sounds amazing. Like, I think you could YouTube that particular sound effect from Doug. Just type in Doug B U. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's like, I think that's what the, the other episode I recall seeing people laugh when, you know, they were laughing at Doug's performance. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it was comedy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I guess that's technically right. Because it's not <laughs> the audience that's laughing, but rather the audience that's laughing if that makes any sense whatsoever 
Oh, they're saying no one watching the show ever laughed? <laughs> I, I think that's it, yes. No one going to... Go on. No one... No, I was just confirming. No one ever, like, actually watching the show. Oh... But technically, was... you are correct. Someone who was watching Doug was laughing at him. Because <laughs> I was like... Because I was laughing at Doug, and then the audience was laughing at Doug, and Roger always laughed. And I was like, wait a minute, Patty laughed, uh, BB laughed, Mr. Dink always laughed. Why not? <laughs> what you doing <laughs> to me, buddy? <laughs> it was very expensive. To find out what was very expensive, find out the next episode of Team Pizza Play. <laughs> <laughs> I will make sure we get our hooks in and so that they will want to watch. Is that a good thing or a bad thing, though?